I think I could just fall asleep right here. Well, hello again, guys. So we're working again on our 1981 Elkie back here. And, you know, we've, we've achieved the first list of projects that I was given. And as so often happens, while it's in the shop getting worked on, and I say, okay, I'm done, an owner comes up with another list. And that's great. No complaints. So, we have done an engine transmission swap and we have put fuel injection on it and everything else that entails. The last video I published on this, we swapped out the uh, seat motor that I'm currently sitting on, or the gearbox actually, so that we can get the six-way power seat working again. That's up and running. Um, now we are going to turn our attention to the dash, the gauges, and the carpet since I have the seats out. So, let's dig in on that, I guess. If I can stand up. Okay, yeah, I can. Whoa. I think maybe we better just throw this back here. Had a kid in the class above me in high school. Drove around with an old couch in the back of his uh, pickup all year long so that his friends would have a place to ride, you know. I wasn't ever so sure he had that many friends, but if he found them, they could have a ride. I'm sorry, that was uncalled for, wasn't it? Alright, I've got the seat bolts loose on the passenger side here. Get my buckle through there. There we go. This thing could handle an entire upholstery, re-upholstery job. I think I've showed you the Leopard print headliner in the past. I'm not sure. It's pretty cool if you like that sort of thing. All right, well, I guess I will spend some time wrestling with screws, trying to get seat belts out, and then we'll yank this carpet out of here. What's that? I don't know. Two of them. Hair clip. Oh, sparkly. There's a little knob for the for the AC rod there. Just kind of put that on. So guys, I'm going to leave the, the old carpet in for now, uh, just a little bit more comfortable for me, other than kneeling on a, a seat stud, you know, that'll, that'll jab your knee. Um, but we're going to get into the dash, the instrument panel and the dash, and I might as well have a nice soft fuzzy seat, right? Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of broken parts. A lot of broken hearts and broken dreams going on in here. Um, I was hoping I could salvage the fascia here, <clears throat> but the more I touch it, the more chips off. So I'm going to determine exactly what to do um, as I go. Um, I bought the two gauges that were not responding when we started it just in, with the idea of replacing them. Uh, we're just going to have to dig into it and see what happens. Ow, those studs do hurt. Okay. Woo!
There is just so much of this old brittle plastic in this thing. And God, finding parts is going to be fun, you know. For some reason when I pull out the headlight switch, lights are on, but I get a right turn indicator on with it. But, having said that, my turn signal does nothing, which is one of the things we're going to come after. Um, and maybe I should just do that, take the wheel off and get into this, and then it's out of the way for that. Uh, yeah, we also have broken column piece down there. That's pretty bad. Someone did a good job of duct taping it, you know. Horn works. One of, the, one of those things I should disconnect before I do this, you know. But you just keep going anyway. Alright, so this plate here is your anti- steering wheel rotate plate you know when you got her shut down you got a pin here that engages the notch so if someone doesn't have your key they can't turn your steering wheel at least not easily had to run home and get my little plate depressor tool couldn't find one here I don't remember what project I built a wider one for Maybe it's that it's narrower, yeah. Might as well use it. I wonder if it was like the 66 Chevy pickup or something, but I don't think I... No, that wouldn't make sense. I was also working on transmission for the 48 Chevy out there, and... Just realized I'm in here working on this thing with gloves on yet. Uh, you know, if you're if you're in here doing this, you may or may not want to leave fingerprints. So, All right, get our snap ring out of there. Okay. That was a defiant toot. It did not like me doing this, I guess. Part of the problem is it's completely loose. Let's see if it tightens up here. We've got blinkers now. Well, I bought him a new one, so I guess we'll put it all. That is enough. I can hang this on this tripod. That would be sweet. No, anyway. Turn my, uh, or disconnected my battery. Uh, I gotta find a place for this. Okay, you might be able to see. We got a little push button right here in this slot. Right in there, so when I turn it on, should be able to yank it out. Unfortunately, 
as I compare the one I got it is very different I don't know how that happened so guess I better make a call we've got a lot of odd mismatched hardware so definitely somebody's been in here a time or five So far I have used standard screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, quarter inch, 930 seconds. What was the last one? Was that quarter inch? 1130 seconds? No. I don't know. Everyone is different, apparently. Somebody thought that would be a great idea. I need to take these little screws out. Uh, and I think we can get this whole thing out. Well, I'm sort of in unfamiliar territory in a way. Uh, I've done some of this in uh, square body pickups of the era, same era, uh, but certainly never one of these. But it looks like if I take three screws out here, then maybe I can get this whole cluster of gauges out. Um, most of my parts from here on out have come from an uh, outfit called Dixie Restoration. Um, they cater mostly to El Caminos and uh, G bodies of I would say 70s and 80s seem to be their main main deal. So that's who I'm getting this from. ECM El Camino Manufacturing. Right on. They are, uh, I've got the the voltage gauge and the fuel were my two that weren't working. Beautiful new gauges. I'm going to have to get some paint and touch up the other needles. But anyway, let's see if we can get this out. Easy. Huh. Color coding and everything. Was someone into making pottery or what? What? 
I uh, tore off the duct tape that was wrapped around this thing and on the plastic portion the two uh, tabs are still there and I got it to to snap in you know so I think if I can get this all cleaned up um, maybe I need to get some interior spray paint or something but I think it's all fine we may have to put a dab of silicone on the tabs or something to just make sure they stay but what I want to I... no words I have no words is it paper mache uh, sheetrock joint compound I don't know Okay, I have all the Silly Putty or Elmer's glue off, whatever it is. Um, so that's good, just scuffing it up with with some sandpaper. Uh, I forgot to mention I also have a carpet ready, standing by in the bullpen, ready to go. So we'll be able to throw that in. Um, what else? Oh, the lock cylinder was wrong. And... I believe I got that with an order of stuff from Rock Auto. I called my parts man. He looked it up and the numbers matched for what I got. So it wasn't making any sense. Um, and as we went back, he had to go into the previous style, I think, back to 1977. Of course, this is an 81, uh, before he was finding the right style of lock cylinder. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, you can see here that there is kind of a bright red all over this column. So whether sometime later or, you know, I don't know if this thing has been changed out. I don't know if that even works from 77, from old older style to new style. Um, if Chevrolet just repainted it. If someone else along the way switched it out and repainted it, I don't know. But uh, either way, we're on the right track with the lock cylinder now. Last night I got on the computer and I ordered a gear selector needle. Where'd that go? So the orange part here, the little hook is broken. I ordered one of those. Um, I found a good one of these. Uh, albeit it is blue around the outside and not the burgundy um, so I called my parts guy and he is ordering from his warehouse a can of Duplicolors vinyl and cloth paint um, so we'll mask that paint that but we'll have the same wood grain and uh, it is not cracked or anything so that'll be great um, also I found on Dixie restoration website they offer, let's see, where's my headlight switch? I'm not seeing it. Anyway, they offer a metal one of these brackets, and the headlight switch has the other piece on it, um, instead of the plastic. So I'll be able to fix that whole issue. Um, the only thing, the only thing I can't really fix is, oh, there it is. That black bezel right there uh, I got coming. Uh, the only thing I can't really do anything about um, is the condition of our tabs and everything in here. Um, but I'll probably just get some some uh, high quality CA type glue, you know, super glue, and uh, bring some activator and just touch everything that looks cracked and take care of it that way. And also I need to get some paint some orange paint for the needles. So, in the meantime, I'm going to wipe down the dash and we are going to install the new the new dash. So, we'll just be uh, we'll just be cleaning in here for a few minutes, you know. We got to get it clean. Okay, I am going to start spreading silicone. 
um, said the bead should be about size of a pencil and half an inch away from the edges. I know uh, I test fit it earlier and uh, these areas around the, the speakers they're going to be they're going to be the problem and we're just going to have to make sure we get them tucked in there okay Alright, here we go. High stress time, right? I used the entire tube of silicone, so I hope that means enough. Okay. This guy tucked in here. that can move. Well, there are professionals and then there are professionals. All things considered, I mean, it's it's where it belongs, right? Uh, in the instructions, they recommend using rags and rolls of paper towels, just like I have, etc. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's in there. It's, it's not perfect, admittedly. It's not a new dash, also. Um where I would really like it a little better is especially around our wood graining. You know, we have a silver line down here, and we kind of lose that up top. Um, so, uh, I mean, it gets rid of the cracks and the faded, and it looks good. Um, so I guess there you go, if you're thinking about something similar. This is kind of what you'd expect, right? So at the same time, I'm working on the uh, oh, the inter interior bits and pieces that you're watching right now. Uh, I'm also working on door seals, all the weather stripping, and that is necessitating me um, to uh, remove a lot of the interior trim. And as you can see, it's just plain pathetic. Um, I did pick up from my parts store some of this Duplicolor vinyl and fabric and they say it works good for dashes, door panels, consoles so forth and so on. It's burgundy in color and uh, I mean it seems like a close enough match. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the steering column with that in just a second. See a guy really wants to put a new dash in and then spray paint right after that. So I've been playing around with the Duplicolor uh, vinyl and cloth paint, and it's beautiful stuff, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you compare it to what was there, 
steering wheel to steering column, there's a bit, I mean, you might notice something's off. Something's off. So, I just called paint store and seeing if they would even know what kind of paint to mix, uh, have them put it in a spray can, you know, a rattle can. Well, he needs trim codes, and I know that. Um, now, in the 80s, typically, they Chevy was putting full stickers in the glove box. I don't know exactly if El Camino's had it, but I imagine they probably did. Uh, this does not. So that is not too helpful. Okay, well, let's go to the Caltag. That would be right up here on this pad, riveted on. Huh. We seem to have uh, hit a blank wall there. I don't... Why is everything gone on this car? I do not know. Um, this is what they call dark maple. So, and I believe that code was 77 something or other from what I found out so far. So what I'm going to do is get on, get online, uh, look up paint codes for these things. See if I can, um, the, the guy at the paint, the paint man didn't know what to do with 77. He needed more of a four digit GM code. Um, that the 77 V or whatever this is, was just a, you know, Chevy's, Chevy's code for the trim package, I guess, and to get down to individual paint colors, we need more of a code. So, it's not working out. Uh, back in early 2000s, um, I sprayed a bunch, you know, my uh, 86 GMC was all faded out on the, it had this type of plastic on the top of the door panels and years of the the elbow rubbing on it in the sun, uh, I I painted it with the SEM brand of paint, and it looked really good. It seemed to match really good. Um, I haven't been able to find that dark maroon GM color from the 80s in SEM, and I was hoping this would be a little bit closer, but it's very, very red, so... Going to have to look a little deeper, dig a little deeper, as they say. Okay, this is, a, this is an exciting day. Uh, the top one here, that is the Duplicolor Burgundy vinyl and cloth paint. This is still the bare original. Uh, it's drying off. I hit it with uh, some cleaner before I paint it. I think what I'm going to do first is paint half of the top one. Um, this is custom paint from, you guessed it, Dixie Restoration Depot. This is a PPG paint, their own custom formula. Uh, they call it Ox Blood. Um, through research, the 77 trim code numbers, um, I just find maroon uh, in the books, you know. Um, and I was having trouble with my go-to paint shops finding the right, first of all, they have to find the right code to mix it. Second of all, there's dye, being a, an interior paint, there's dye in there. Um, and one of the paint shops said they have, they've had trouble even getting what they need to make that stuff. So, um, I was really excited to see looking around on Dixie's website that they even had some. I can already tell it's much darker. Oh yeah. Sorry the light's bad. The sun is not out today so far and uh, well you know the deal with fluorescent lights. I'll bring you in a little closer. Oh, yeah. So 
So here's our horn button. That is going to look so much better. That is very good. Um, I'm going to go paint the steering column right now, and you'll see it when we get back to work on it. Otherwise, I'm going to spend some time cleaning plastic parts, painting them up, and hopefully I can get everything done I need to with two cans. So as per discussed earlier, our instrument panel is very brittle, very cracked. It's held together with duct tape on the top there. We were losing chunks off the edge when we took it out, um, broken out around the screw holes. It's in bad shape. I suppose a guy, if he wanted to take the time, if he had to, he could meticulously glue things back together, uh, maybe reinforce it somehow on the back. Uh, things would still tend to want to break, I'm sure. Uh, but you could fix it. But if I don't have to, I don't have to. Got on the eBay machine and uh, found this. It, this one was being sold out of a Monte Carlo, but obviously the same thing. Uh, the only problem is it's blue, which isn't a problem. So mask the wood grain off and we'll make it red. Now I want to pull the old carpet off the door panel, uh, prepare it for painting. Um, we've got staples all the way around the perimeter, so I'm just going to zip those off real quick. So a bit messy and, and aggressive, but a wire brush on an angle grinder. What was that? Really peels off that hard glue that they used on that carpet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up and sanding. Uh, of course, any sanding you do is just going to take off the texture, but it's already gone on a lot of places. Um, this is just merely sprucing it up a little. This is not, you know, show quality, no. Um, this is going to make it a, a little nicer, a little more comfortable on the inside, but uh, not not 100%, if you know what I'm trying to say. Here's a quick look at the captain's controls with the ox blood paint on the column instead of the uh, burgundy. Um, looks a lot better. Now the wheel looks far more red than the column. That matches perfectly the new dash. You know, what are you going to do? If you're not going to paint everything, then something's not going to look right, you know? Uh, I'm going to turn the fan back on, so I'm probably 
go into time lapse warp speed mode here. Uh, I'm going to be installing the correct uh, lock cylinder for this column, and that's a US 61L. Again, don't know why it's different, don't know why it's not what it should be according to the parts books, but that's what it is. And then the turn signal switch. Um, what do we got? TW20. I haven't even looked into if that's correct or not. I imagine it probably is. Um, but I'm going to try to get that buttoned up, go back together with the instrument panel, start working on that. Um, this fun stuff, I've got a solution for that. And uh, let's just get something done here. Well, I should be ready to install this. Um, it's going to take me a while to figure out all the clips and pieces and hardware that just fell off of this thing. Um, but I can have you along for the ride for the start of it anyway. So I gotta get this in here. Then we got a light. And the headlight switch. Oh, I've got a speedometer. Snapped in, and my headlight harness. Where are you? There you are, you little beggar. You gotta come out here. There you go. Okay. Other than that, everything's just go into place. Okay, I, I think I have the driver's side door panel as good as it's going to get. Is it going to look awesome? Not a chance. No way. Is it going to look great? Fat chance. Is it going to look good? I seriously doubt it. Is it going to look better? I'm going to go with yes. Well, as far as the plastic portion of our door panels, they're, they're as good as they're going to get, you know. Um, I got this car full carpet kit from, well, I ordered it through Rock Auto because they're a dealer. It's an ACC kit. Um, the, full, the whole shebang, uh, and actually the first one I ordered, see, I don't have any trim codes. I don't have a... I don't have tags. Well, we went through this. Um, so I just got on Rock Auto. I looked at their sample chart. Yeah, that red looks the closest, a dark red. Ordered it, and it was way off. 
you know, I mean, it was bright red. So what I did, I returned that in exchange for this. But what I did, I got on ACC's website, and there you can filter down what they offer for your particular model. You can filter down original colors. Then you, then I could see what colors they say, you know, um, came originally on the car. This is this carpet is what they call a dark maple, um, and it is a very good match. Um, their their die cutting or however they cut this left some rough edges, some fuzzy edges, and there was a lot on there I needed to vacuum off. So I'm just cleaning that up a little bit, making them look a little better. Now I'm going to mask off our door panels, and then I'll find a place, some cardboard to flop these upside down, spray everything down with contact cement, stick them on there. And I have the hopes, I, I just know these people are going to come back. Um, door panels, especially the lowers, headliner, and seat covers. I just have that feeling I'm going to be working on this thing again. So I'm hoping that with just contact cement, I'm not going to bother stapling anything together like it was originally. Um, if that happens, if they come back and say, yeah, we want door panels, uh, then with the use of some steam, some heat, you know, hopefully I can release this contact cement and reuse these. Time will tell if that will even happen. Seems to be a little bound up in there. You know, when you wash everything off before you start to work on it and you still got this much dust, what's, what's even happening? I don't know. The dust of the ages. Anyway, I got a new little fastener kit and I got a new rubber seal set that goes on the bottom. looking like one hole was different and I compared it to the original and indeed one hole is different so I don't know what's going on with that but I'm gonna have to make one right there
here at the door I have a new die cut plastic vapor barrier really nice uh, you know it beats it beats duct taping the hefty bag onto the thing you know if, know what I'm saying uh, and then a really nice felt insulation kit I think you know where I got them by now. I'm gonna go grab the lower panel. I laid out my carpet yesterday. I am going to pull this old one up, vacuum the floor, and see if we can get... Oh man, this is awesome. See if we can get uh, some nice carpet laid in, in here. I would like to get the seats in. I think everything else I need to do, I can do with the seats in. Um, just get that out of the way. Uh, otherwise... I don't know. We'll just keep moving. Okay, so I was going to put carpet in and then this happened. But we got the holes taken care of in the floor and that's going to be good enough for now. He doesn't want to go any farther for now. Maybe someday, right? But they, I patched them up, should be good to go. Uh, so I am going to hit it as hard as I can today and try to get carpet in, door panel in, instrument panel taken care of, seats back in, anything else. Anyway, let's just get to work. This is totally where I would have been hanging out as a kid. I guess I'm a little past that now, huh? Oh well.
So we've got some old duct tape residue. I'm going to take some penetrating oil. See if we can get her off of there. Just getting all the black goo buildup on the steering wheel, getting that off you know, from all the years. There is a lot of it, actually starting with acetone and then working my way down to the armor all. It's, it's real. You know, heading into fall, the weather's cooling off just enough a guy can barely tolerate not having the fan going while I'm while I'm filming here but along with that then the crickets hatch it's so difficult for a guy on a budget making videos to do a good job with the sound I I, I don't know I really resist using a mic having to deal with mics and more batteries, more setup. I just want to work, you know, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Okay, enough whining. How about we just work on this? This is enough to make you want to lay off the McDonald's drive-thru for a while. I lost my horn in a driving movie. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Lewis. Welcome to Teenage Dance Time, Stanley. I always will. Uh, yes, uh... The incomparable Jerry Lewis. I lost my heart. Not a bad steering wheel. We're missing some of the silver or gold plastic beadwork. I don't know what you want to call it. The inlay. Maybe a guy could even find something to stick back in there. But it's gonna work for now and it cleaned up a lot better than it looked. I lost my heart at a driving movie. Maybe that's why I'm thinking of that. The horn. I don't know. I lost my heart in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Right in the movie. Um, one of the last major things, I really don't want to cut this fabric, is the, whatever these are called, sun visors. Driver's side is so, so well worn. I mean, I hate to ruin the patina of the thing, but I took the liberty and just 
ordered a set while we were at it. Because honestly, all we've done from the inside, uh, it's looking so much nicer, but if you got in there and saw this, how would you feel about it? That's what I thought. So, does it matter? I don't think it matters what I do here. Uh, do I run this home to the buffing wheel? He's got a buffing wheel here, but I don't think it's been used in a coon's age, but I'll check it out. I mean, who could want more, right? Uh, I don't find any buffing compounds so far here, but I see this is quite splattered on this side. So I'm just going to use some polishing compound, liquid type, because obviously that's what's been done in the past. Let's get some of this stuff. This is all kind of pitted and rusty and junky anyway, but I just hate to put it back the way it is, you know? I'm sure this will make a mess of me. Pour some sugar on me. I'm hot, sticky, sweet, from my head to my feet, yeah. Where are you? From Jerry Lewis to Def Leppard in three easy lessons. Seems like it's right there. Welcome to the lap of luxury. Okay, maybe not. Okay guys, that is going to do it for this video. Our interior is as complete and done as it's going to get. That is a big check mark off the checklist. Big check, big... One big box on the checklist checked, I guess you could say. Now a lot of you might say, hey man, you had all the trim out. You had the seats out, why not just recover them? You're there, why not do the headliner? You're there, so forth and so on. Well, that list represents easily a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe even as much as two thousand dollars in parts. And then my labor to do them, you're probably looking at two days, three days. You could easily go two to four thousand dollars extra, you know, with that little list. Um, and times are what they are, you know. I used to do complete restorations, and as long as I've been doing videos, I've just had a string of project vehicles where it's been do this much, get it up and running, and that'll be good enough kind of thing, you know, and that's, I think, just a sign of the times. People aren't wanting to spend as much more on these frivolous, let's face it, old cars, their frivolous hobby and friz frivolous projects, they aren't necessary for day-to-day -day life. I mean, they are for me, but no one considers that, you know. Uh, anyway, I completely understand. I'm right there with my own projects as well. So, we're just going to do what the guy wants done, and we're going to move on to the next thing. And then maybe one day, it will come back, like he said himself, maybe in a year. We will enjoy it throughout a year, and then we'll bring it back and get the rest done. Maybe we'll get to paint it. Who knows? A year is a long time. I have just a very small list of things to do after this. I will make probably one more video on this car, 
AC system needs to be gone through. Um, I want to run the setup on the fuel injection again. Um, just drive it around a little, make sure that's good to go, check the timing again, that sort of thing, check the fluids. Uh, the transmission pan has been dripping this whole time. I don't know why it's all brand new. I have a new gasket for that. Uh, basic, yeah, just take it for a drive. Maybe drive it a couple days. Make sure it's good to go. And then it will go back home to owner. So, I don't know what else to tell you guys. That's pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys who come, come around for every video no matter what the content is. You guys are awesome. You are such a blessing. You are such an encouragement for me to continue to do this. Sometimes I really don't feel like getting the camera out. I just want to work. Um, and I do it for you guys who are here no matter what. So thank you very much. You are a blessing. God bless you folks. Thanks for coming by. See you on the next one. It's a little bit concerning when there's whole walnuts in a car. I mean, is there a squirrel in here or something? Yeah, I don't know. Huh.